Uh, ladies and gents, my name's Simon Brown, doing this evening's presentation. Uh, so everyone here passed the IQ test. We changed venues, and you noticed. Well done. Um, <laughs> and uh, some of you, uh, there's some folks there who are frantically trying to get through Santin traffic to get here this evening. Be that as it may. I'm going to close the door because saxophone is nice, but better than me. Come on. Electric guitar, maybe, not saxophone. Uh, so today, part two of the series, uh, part three, we come back with uh, next month. I'm going to do a quick uh, reprisal, reprisal of what we've done so far, and I need to turn my doofa on, and then we are totally in business. Um, so we go way back to when we did the boot camp which was a 12-part series of, of theory around trading. We then did a practical systems, which was the masterclass, six videos. Those videos are all online, available, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. And the process is boot camp, then masterclass. And once we had done that, we thought that's really lucky, that's really useful. But it's a lot of theory. And, and, and how do we practically take the trading and, and turn ourselves into traders, into functional people who, who make money off this and make livings from trading and, and, and the like? And, and really this what this three-part series is that we're looking at now, The Trader's Life. The first part was process a month ago. That video is online. Uh, tonight we look at money, money, and then next month we look at tools. Two tips here. One, date change, 31 October. Two, we're at the JSC. Or if you're on the webcast, we're on the webcast. Um, and when we come back at the end of October for that process, we're going to run through it. We're going to bring it all together. And a lot of it is how can we use the IG website to automate the process so that we don't have to do as much, you know, so we can basically wait for a mobile phone to beep and that sort of thing. And I'm going to put the whole process around my 721 trading system. Because a lot of folks are, this is all great, but what is the 721 that you talk about? And, and that will be the practical. We will use that as the core system, and then we will do the whole tools around it and how to practically do it within the, 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 the IG environment. And there's a lot that we can do there to take what is simple trading and simplify it even more. You know, the last thing we want to be, and it's the point I always make, and it comes to this here, is that trading needs to be integrated into our lives. We don't want to have to spend our days staring at screens because that's just a, diff that's a job. You know, and, and what we want to be able to do is, is what I call freedom from ties that bind, which is that slide, which is the trading must work for us. And part of that is the tools that can, that, that, so we ignore the trading until our cell phone beeps. And it's like, okay, now we've got a trigger. Now we set the confirmation, wait for the next beep, and then we respond. That it's free to do what we want to do in, in, in the in-between process. So that's all what we went through last time. As I said, it's about supporting us financially. It's about freeing our time. What we don't want to be is day traders because that's just a job. Yeah, and maybe you do. And maybe it's a rite of passage we need to go through. And certainly I've spent time being a day trader and the likes. But ultimately, you know, trading needs to serve us rather than us serving the trading. And that's really what this whole process we talk in this evening is all about. And ultimately, what I call that freedom from ties that bind. So... This evening, we're talking money. A couple of uh, 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 disclaimers right up front. I love numbers, man. Numbers just, I I'm, a, I'm a math nerd. I love numbers. And there was a part, point yesterday where this thing was complicated, complicating me. I have tried to make these numbers as simple as possible because I appreciate not everyone loves numbers as much as I do. Um, and it's probably bad for my health, but it is what it is. Uh, and I've also kept it shorter so I can go slower, so we can go over points and sort of folks are confused or not sure, we can revisit it, we can spend time on the process, and of course the video and everything will be up tomorrow so you can go back and revisit it. And worst case, everyone understands everything and we finish a little early and that's not a problem, we can dodge the scent in traffic. The trick with money is it freaks our head out. It's as simple as that. Think of the cliches and the idioms out there around money. None of them are positive. You know, a fool and his money soon parted, that sort of thing. You know, money is critically important in, in a sense, and we can debate that. But that's a philosophical debate, and we'll park it. Money's important. Um, we, we, we use it for measurement. In other words, your car, your house, your suit, your, your, your shoes, and everything else. Uh, when we die, no one ever mentions your bank balance, maybe because we all have bad bank balances at death. But, you know, it, it, it's something that completely freaks our head. Nothing causes us, I don't, want to say, don't say nothing, not much causes us as much pain and suffering as money. And the problem with trading is really, really simple, is that money is typically an abstract concept, right? Credit cards, and you pay for this, and you pay for that, and all you really know is the ping-ping on your phone, and you see it arrive, and 10 minutes later, it all leaves, like, you know, and it's relatively abstract. 
And, you know, and we've got an idea maybe about what our net worth is. We've got an idea maybe more or less how much we have in our account, those sort of things. Welcome to trading. Where second by second, that money is changing. It's going up. It's going down. It's going sideways. You're richer. You're poorer. You are stressed. And, and we've got to manage that process. And we manage it a bunch of ways. We're going to go through that. Um, so a lot of it is around the fear of losing money. A lot of it is around we ignore stops because we're scared of being wrong because of the fear of losing money. A lot of it is around our emotional responses and how we deal with money. I'm not delving massively into that. There is a boot camp session on psychology which deals a lot around the cognitive biases and how we can manage the money process. Um, we, don't, we start too small. We, we start a trading account. We fund it with 500 rand and we think we'll be an oppenheimer by the weekend and it's just not enough to actually make the process and to do the risk. Uh, we trade too large which is the flip side where We've got 20,000 in the account and we gear it up and we take 200,000 rand exposure and something goes wrong and we are, you know, busted within moments in, in, in no time at all. It's panicking when we have drawdowns. Drawdowns are when everything's going nicely and then suddenly your system just hits a bad spot. You know, my 721 system up until end of July was having the best year ever and then August arrived. And in one week in August, I had, I mean, that week in August was like the worst week of, of my trading in terms of, of cash flow that I can remember. I mean, probably in 15 or more years. And it's to be expected, right? You have the seven best months. You expect to have some rough time. What you like is it like, you know, intermixed the good with the bad. Instead, I got all the good and then all the bad. Um, it's like eating your vegetables after your pudding, in this case. But the process is it, it's there, and we've got, to, we've, we've got to expect it. We've got to understand those drawdowns. We, the problem with drawdowns is, is what happens is every trading system in the world will have a drawdown. You're doing great, and then you start to lose some money for a period of time. It is going to happen. But if you're not expecting it, if you don't understand the size of the drawdown, what happens typically is we panic, and we decide there's a problem with the system, and we abandon the system, and we try something else. We change things. We, we, you know, and it, was, it took a lot for me in August. And understand, I've been trading for 20-odd years and, and profitably for 17. It took a lot for me for that one week in August to, at the end of the week, not change anything. Because trust me, I wanted to. Because there was a, there was a fundamental thing that was happening. So when you enter a trade, it usually at least goes a bit of your way before stopping you out. This time, four trades in a row. In, immediate stop, max stop value. So immediately you look at that and you say, well, how can I tweak it? And I did. And I was, happened to be in Cape Town and I was with Petri Radenhaus and we looked at some ideas. And then I said to him, no, this is the wrong response to the drawdown. I expect this to happen. I actually expect five of these trades to happen every year. I had four in a week. You know, it's just, it was the, just the random distribution. Again, we have to understand that random distribution. Random distribution means that something that should happen on average every uh, 10 weeks can happen four times in one week. That's what random distribution is. Um, and, and we've got to be prepared for it, and we've got to understand that's going to happen. So it comes back, and I put this slide up every single time I do a presentation. It comes back to those perfect trades. We've got to measure ourselves. And we don't measure ourselves on the shorter term by are we making money or not. We measure ourselves by are we trading properly. Are we being a master of our profession? In this case, profession is trading. Are we doing the right thing at the right time every single time? Are we consistent? Are we disciplined? Are we sticking to the process? And I want to say the only, certainly the best way to my mind to do it is to do a perfect trade. And it looks immensely easy. And then it's quite hard. And then you've got to try and do again and again and again. And, you know, this is my list for perfect trades. So every single trade I do, I do the perfect trade. I stick it up and I'm, I check myself. Um, you will note at no stage does it say, did I make money or not? Because that part I can't control in an individual trade. But this is what gets you through your, your drawdowns, that and trust in the system. And I've, I'll come to that in a moment or two as well, is to monitor your trades, to make sure you know what you're doing, to make sure you're doing the right thing, and to keep you honest. When I had that worst week, the first thing I did was to go and make sure that all my trades were perfect. And they were. So that's like, okay, cool, my trades are good, which means this is just a function of the system. This is not human error. 
which can creep in. And this, sort of, you know, this keeps you honest. You can change it. You can adjust it. In, my, in hindsight, seven points is perhaps a few too many, uh, but seven it is, and I've been using this since March of 2010, um, so I, I continue to use it. I don't want to now. I am very resistant to changing things because I worry that we change to accommodate uh, uh, bad behavior in ourselves which is why I'm very resistant to changing systems and processes uh, because that, you know, it's just too easy to cop out and say, well, you know what, I keep on breaking this rule, why don't I drop it? Well, no, if you keep on breaking that rule, why don't you learn not to break it? <laughs> Key point is trading's a business. And I say this all the time, trading is a business. And, and, and let's step back and understand what I mean more holistically about this. Um, in this case, the business of trading is buying and selling various financial assets, going long or short on them, and making profit in some, and incurring losses on other, and incurring costs within that process of it. But if we step back a little bit further, is you know, like a hot dog business has has costs involved. But if you've got a hot dog business, what are you trying to do? Well, you're trying to reduce your costs without impacting quality and customer service. So, you know, if you can get the serviettes 10 cents cheaper per serviette and they're the same quality, you get the 10 cent cheaper serviette. Of course you do, because over a lifetime of selling hot dogs, those 10 cents a shot adds up. And we need to come to trading in the same perspective. We need to be, you know... I don't know, certainly in business, the idea is critically important. In truth, the, the real issue in starting businesses is actually execution. Ideas are relatively dime a dozen. It's around the execution. And a large part of that execution is actually around the cash flow. The money's in, the money's out, the, the, the funding required, etc. And that's why we're spending an entire session on money this evening, because it's so critically important. Another quick point, and it, it, it's more about next month's presentation, but let's quickly touch on it now. Losing money in a trade is cost of doing your business. As a trader, you are not ever going to have a 100% profitable run. You're never going to have 100% of your trades make money. In other words, there is an expectation that some of your trades will lose you money. That will happen. And what we've got to do is flip that psyche to say, oh, lost money, bad. No, if we do all of those and we get seven ticks on our perfect trade and we lose money, it's still a good trade because you've got a distribution. So my system has a, a win rate of around 42, 43%, which means I lose money most of the time. But when I lose money, I lose 100, and when I make money, I make 150. And occasionally, I make 350, and that distribution shakes out and I come out profitable. The losing trades are an expected part of trading. They're a cost of doing business. In this case, it's not the, the, the serviettes with the hot dogs, it's the tomato sauce. And some people don't take tomato sauce. And boom, and that person doesn't, I know you all looked at me squiff. <laughs> yeah, some people don't take tomato sauce on their hot dogs, trust me. I'm one of them. <laughs> Those folks who don't take tomato sauce on their hot dog, you've saved five cents. But it's a cost of business. A trade that loses money is just a cost in the business. And if we start to view trading as distinct parts, and if we view the money part as a, as a business part, the process goes easier, that stress and freak out around the trading becomes a lot simpler at the same time. So then comes the two big questions. And we're going to delve into both, and we're going to spend a fair bit of time with them. The first is how much capital, and the second is, dependent on what we're trading, how much do we particularly need for that particular product we want to trade. If you want to trade the, 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 the DAX futures at 25 euro per point, how much capital do you need to trade an index at 25 euros per point? Um, yeah, 25 euros per point. Uh, yeah, um, but it's just numbers. And, and the point is with, with the numbers is that, you know, the beauty of numbers and why I love numbers so much is firstly, they're completely true. And secondly, you can make them fit. You might not like the answer at the end of the day. I mean, how do you trade 25 euros a point? Well, you have a very large pile of cash to start with. And if you haven't got it, well, then you trade the mini and you trade 5 euros a point. And if you haven't got that, you trade the mini SA40 at, at 4 and a point, and, and we, that's how that process goes. First part of the equation is simply how much cash do we need? And that then is two questions of how long is a piece of string. So this is giving you the formula. You crunch it for yourself. The question is, so the process of this is we want to live off our trading. I spoke last month about is trading your sole income or is it a supplementary income? In other words, do you have other sources of income, be there whatever, or is this it? And that, that's going to be different for everyone. And it'll be different at different stages in our lives. Um, 
the first question is simply is, what do you need to, what is your expectation of how much money you want from trading? Yeah, and, and the example I've used here, if you want 40,000 a month from your trading, that's 480 a year, that's 500,000, just to round it off to make the math simpler. Now, 40,000 a month might be half of what you need, but the other half comes from robbing banks or something like that. I didn't say that, did I? No, I didn't. Don't rob banks. They don't have money at banks anyway. That, that's long since over. Um, so, you know, or maybe that's all you need. Or maybe you look at that and you think, 40,000 a month, what's this oak? Oh, bathing in, 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 you know, Verve Clicquot or something like that. I need only 10,000 a month. Well, then you adjust the number accordingly. If you need 10,000 a month, that's 120 a year. Um, the question then comes in, when we start trading, let's say our target is 40 a month. Let's say we want the 500,000. The problem is, is we don't want to, in October, be earning October's money. If that makes sense. We want to be earning next October's money. In other words, I want my first year of living expenses in the bank sitting behind me. Because if I'm standing here in October, and let's pretend it's Monday and it's October, if I'm on Monday, 2nd of October, and I set off and I say, cool, I have to make 40,000 Rand by the end of the month in order to live. What happens if I have an August? where I didn't make any money, I lost money that month. So what that does, if you're trading today for today's money, you're putting huge pressure on yourself, massive pressure on yourself. So what I say is, quite simply, you can need that first year of cash in your bank account, you can then live on that. And this is scalable, and, and when we're younger and, and have less needs and we've got perhaps other incomes, we can scale the process. But we need that first year's money. So what that means in October 2017, we're not earning October 2017 money. We're earning October 2018 money. We're earning the salary for a year's down the line. So when August 2017 happens, and I have a shocker of a month, and I have made no money for August 2018, that's fine because it will smooth out over the next 12 months. I had a brilliant, you know, Jan to July, and that will cover the bad month. But it takes that pressure off. You know, I, I did it for a while where I was trading, and at the end of the month, I took money out of my trading account, and that was part of my living expenses. Um, it worked. It wasn't huge fun. And, and there was a, a scam to it to a degree. My wife had a job, so worst case, we could, you know, eat beans. She was a vegetarian, so we eat beans anyway. Um, <laughs> but you get the point. I mean, the, the thing is, is that, you know, there was at least a level of base. But I was doing that, you know, this was back in 04 or 05 or 06. I was doing the day trading where, you know, at the end of the month, I would scoop money out. And sometimes there were bad months, and there was like, whoops, no money to scoop out this month sort of scenario. What you want to do is get that first year, whatever it might be, and have that in the bank. That's your living. Then you need to fund your brokerage account in order to then generate the next year, to, 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 to generate the money that's going forward. So you've got your living expenses, and now you need to go and have the brokerage account that generates next year's money. So the first question is, how much do you need? Second question is, how much does your portfolio perform? So again, sticking with the half a million rand number, because it's nice and easy and we can work with it. If your portfolio does 100% a year, if your expectation is that you can, that you can do 100% per year in your trading portfolio, you need a million rand. The half a million you live on and the second half a million creates next year's living money. If your portfolio is doing 50% a year, you need one and a half. 500,000 to live on, the million rand you trade, and because you do 50%, that million rand generates you half a million rand. So it generates you next year's revenue. If your system's doing 33, you need two million. If your system does 25, you need two and a half. Does that make sense? The first unknown is the how much you need, but that's a number that you can crunch and that will be different for everybody else. The real unknown is the percentage return you're going to get. I'm going to, a couple of points I want to make on that. <laughs> Firstly, temper your expectation when you start. <laughs> yeah, uh, everyone's still got their fingers, but sometimes it's a close call. You know, it took me five years to start making money in the trading, um, and maybe because I'm a slow learner, uh, you know, I'm from Durban, KZN, but also maybe because, you know, there's a lot of psychology. This is a skill we need to learn. There's a so temper your expectation. A 25% return per year is a solid return. But I say to a trader, if this is your first year of trading, your expectation, your goal, 
is to have the same amount of money at the end of the year that you did at the beginning of the year. In other words, don't lose money. Don't worry about making money. First, lose, learn how to not lose money. Once you've learned how to not lose it, then you can start moving towards making money. And when you're at the point where it's now time to start making money, so 100% returns possible? Sure, uh, that, that's top traders. Certainly the 33 to 50% needs to be our target zone. That needs to be the zone that we're looking in for. That absolutely has to be it. There are traders out there I know who do around 100%. My system is not delivering at that level. My system generates more closer to its around, uh, and I can't... I crunched the number, I think it was 48 point some change. That's what my expectancy is. And some years it'll be 53, and some years it'll be 41. Um, and, and there's ways, there's some points around it, and I'm going to come to that in a bit, where you, you, you get a more consistent process and you get less lumpiness to it. But uh, the first point then is that folks are saying, and let's go to this one right down here because it's the big number. You're saying, Yelza, I need 2 million. That's a vast amount of money. Yes. Uh, there's, no, there's no disguising 2 million is a vast amount of money. And it generates you 500,000 a year, which is 40 a month. That's nice. But you know what? You're not bathing in Vico. It, it's just, you know, you've got good old-fashioned water coming out of your, t your, your, your taps. The point is, understand what you've achieved at this point. You've achieved two, true freedom from ties that bind. If this is a life goal to get to the point where trading can be your fund of income, your source of income, you are in that, that golden spot. You are able to do what few are, and you can, you know, it's the old cliche, you can do it from anywhere in the world where you have internet connection. And then we can do anything. And that is what the point of trading is. The point of trading is not to make money. Yes, it is. But the real point of trading is that freedom from ties that bind. To do what you do because you enjoy doing it. And maybe that means having a 40-hour-a-week job. If you like your 40-hour-a-week job. That's the point. And the target then is to raise the money. This idea that we can start with a couple of thousand rand and get horribly rich and buy helicopters by Christmas just is not true. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, if it did, it would be beautiful. And occasionally it happens and someone gets terribly lucky and they're all over your Facebook feed. Usually that person all over your Facebook feed is a scammer. Top tip, when they're posing in front of a helicopter, go get the helicopter number and stick it in Google. Nine times, in fact, every time I have done that, it's not their helicopter. Some chappy claimed an airplane. So I go put the number in. The airplane's in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I phone Scottsdale, Arizona. I say, this airplane, I, is it? And they're like, no, this airplane's actually impounded. And she looks out the window and she says, it's still there. It's been there for eight months. <laughs> The chappie on Twitter is saying, hey, look what I bought. It's like, no, dude, you didn't buy that. Not ever. It's in Scottsdale, Arizona. I spoke to the lady. It's there. She offered to send me a picture. We get very rich one way, in a hurry. One way we get rich in a hurry. You guys know the answer. Marry money. Everything else takes time. Trading is no different. If this takes you, I don't know, one year, five years, ten years. Imagine it takes you ten years. Okay, we're all 10 years older, we're grey, we're wrinklier, we're whatever, blah, 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 and everything else, and et cetera. But look what we have. In a sense, we have our own little personal ATM machine built into our cell phone. That's as empowering as it can get. So, of course, no one has that much on day one. It's a process. We start small. We work up to it. The JC wasn't built in a day, neither was Rome, neither was anything else. The, the, you know, trading, as with everything else, is a process. It's going to take time. It's worth the time. It's worth the effort. We've got to learn the skills. We've got to build the capital. We can start small, and I'll come to those numbers in a, in a minute. But we've got to accept that we start somewhere, and we will get there in time. So then how much capital per instrument? And it depends what we trade. And... If you've been to my presentations before, if you were at my presentation, we did the first series, first session of this series, you know that I am not a fan of trading equities, shares. I'm not a, I, I don't like the, the, the risk in individual shares. I don't like the volatility around them. You know, some CEO says something or some results are bad or, you know, if you roll the results are actually just turned out to have been, you know, can I say crookery or were they fudged? Let's say they were fudged. Um, 
et cetera, et cetera, and stock lose 17% before you. I, I don't like that volatility. And it goes back, and I've used this analogy hundreds of times. How often does a top 40 share move 2% in a day? On average, of those 40 shares, around five, six, eight of them move 2% a day. How often does our index, the top 40, SA40, move 2% in a day? Not so far this year. How often has the euro-dollar exchange rate moved 2% in a day? Not in the history of the euro. Since 1 December, 1 Jan 1999, the euro dollar has never moved 2% in a day. We want to reduce that volatility down because what is volatility? It's risk and it cuts both ways. Yes, you might be on the right side of the equation and make a bucket load of money, but trust me, one day you'll be on the wrong side of the equation. And even with guaranteed stops and the like, the point is we want to reduce the number of traders we do because trades are a cost. And as a business, we want to keep our costs low. So we don't want to do 50 trades a day. We want to try and do 30 trades a year. 10 trades a year. How about that? Because then we've only got 10 sets of fees. Now, there's other costs. I get it. You're thinking the cost of interest and all of that. Yes, yes, and yes. But that initial cost of crossing the spread, that initial cost of transaction fee, we've got to be, we've got to be watching out for. So I will touch briefly on, on, on equities, but I'm going to focus on the two that I always suggest, and I always say to folks, trade FX, trade indices. Start with indices. Start with the SA40 because we can trade at four and a point. The reason we start there is because FX is a lion's pit and there's every expectation that we can go into the lion's pit and win, but first we've got to learn how to win. If we go into the lion pit on day one, we are, we are dinner. In fact, we're probably just hors d'oeuvres. We've got to learn how to do that process. And we learn that by trading at four rand a point on, on, on the SA40. Two minis, the minis are two rand a point, and you can, you, the, the minis have a minimum of two contracts at two rand a point, which makes four rand a point. And that's a nice, simple place to start. We can do it nice and cheap, and we can learn the ropes there and burn our fingers. And when you're burning your fingers at four rand a point, it's not a problem. When you're burning your fingers at 25 euros a point, you better have a lot of fingers. So the first point is, where do I get all this info? I'm running through a whole bunch of stats here. I've just pulled it straight off the IG website. You'd log on. You get, uh, this happens to be the offshore platform. Um, on the side there, you go pick whatever you want. I clicked Germany. Uh, up pops the Germans, and there's the, uh, the German 30, which is the DAX. And you click the drop down, you click info, and then it'll tell you everything, which tells you what your margin requirement is, stop distances, value of a point, uh, index points, contract size, per, et cetera. So all of those sort of requirements. So that's why I'm pulling the data. Why, <coughs> excuse me, am I focusing on DAX? I'll touch on that. I've spoke about it a lot more in the previous presentation. I like the time frame, time zone. It's more or less the same as ours. Um, the trick with S&P, which is a great, I mean, the E-mini is a brilliant product. S&P 500, the U.S. is a great market. And the 500, not the Dow. The Dow is a terrible thing to trade. Um, but it's the time zone. But he has a point that's, that, that, that a friend of mine in, in, in Cape Town made, John. And he said, hang on a second. He has a thought. So you've got a day job and you want to learn how to trade. How do you learn how to trade when you have a day job or trade nights? In other words, come home at 5 o'clock and trade the S&P until 10 o'clock. I mean, you won't have much of a life, but, but no, I mean, you won't, and that's a terrible idea. But the truth is, you know what, sometimes we've got to put the PT in, and, and we've got to have, you know, so maybe you sacrifice life for two or three years and learn how to trade by trading at night, um, and you come out the other end a trader, and now you can phone your boss and say, hmm, not today, guys, sorry, dude, I'm trading DAX today. Of course, if you're a really, really lazy trader like me, you trade on a daily chart, which actually makes that all moot, which means you only, you know, you only trade. If you trade in the S&P, you, you, know, you need to be awake at 11 o'clock and make sure you haven't drunk too much wine so you can click the right buttons. <laughs> Top tip. <laughs> Alcohol and trading do not mix. I mean, there's no surprise there, but really, 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 people trust me on this one. I've made few bad mistakes, and every single one of them, I had a glass of wine in my hand. Um, and sometimes it was lunchtime. So it wasn't even many glasses of wine in my hand. So that's where the data comes from. I like the DAX. It's a nice chart. It moves nicely. Why not the FTSE? Because at times the FTSE has been overly correlated to the South African market. That's no longer as applicable because those really big dual-listed stocks are gone. Uh, SAB Miller has gone. Old Mutual is not as big. Uh, Anglo is not as big. But if you go back a couple of years ago, the FTSE and the SA market pretty much moved in lockstep. That's no longer the case. But Germany is just a market... Yeah, and what I love about Germany is what do I know about the German market? Ah, that's not true. I do know one thing. Actually, I know two. It's called the DAX, and it's in Frankfurt. 
I once flew over Frankfurt. I know three things. That lack of knowledge is beautiful. So if there's a big news story that something's happening in Europe, I have no idea. So what does that mean? It means I'm not being influenced by noise. You know, I talk about noise. What is noise? Everything that is not Christ. I know three things about that, and it's a Dax, it's Frankfurt, and I flew over it, and that's a lovely thing. It means all I have is price. Nothing else bothers me. They tell me that some company's gone bust. I'm like, I don't even know what market they're in. Yeah, yeah don't know, don't care, doesn't matter. Perfect. I used to say trade Singapore, but this is a much better. Singapore was, I met, a, I met an IG client in, 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 in Durban who trades Singapore for exactly the same reason. He's like, I know nothing about Singapore. I haven't even been there before. I said, like, what's the market called? And he's like, oh, hang on. And he goes onto the IG platform to see the name of the market. So that's where the info is. We're going to crunch through it. So the question is, how much do you need to trade a particular product? So the number we looked at earlier, the 1 million, 1 and a half, 2 million, whatever, is, is how much capital do you need? But now the question is, what do you trade? And what's the max expectancy? So I'm going through just a few. The first is Euro, uh, FX, which is a euro dollar. Uh, the mini contract, uh, you need $2,000. It gives you 10,000 euros. Now, I know it gets complicated. The value is euros, but your profit and loss is, is $1 per point. Notwithstanding, you're sitting in euros. That's the, the FX process. So here you can trade a mini, you need 2,000. The mini, uh, you then get the major, which is then a 20,000 and would be a 10,000 euro exposure. Your exposure is always onto the first half of it. But a mini contract, $2,000, you can trade a mini contract, nice and simple, it works. You can make good money off it. It's a great product to trade. There's one caveat, and I'm going to come to it, but it's, it's the reason I come to the next point, where I looked at the pound euro. And here's the point. I'm going to come to it in a lot more detail, but I'm going to touch on it quickly now. You've got an offshore IG account, and it's funded in a currency. And let's say that currency is whatever, and you then trade in a different currency. In other words, say it's funded in, in, in pounds, and you trade the DAX in euro. You've now got a currency conversion, and guess what? That's a cost. So what do you do? You fund your account in euros. You say to IG, I want a euro denominated account. You trade the DAX in euro. You trade pound euro, which is euro. You don't get those currency crosses. Or you can trade in sterling and then go trade the FTSE and go and trade a uh, 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 pound dollar. And you're in euro. The point is, trade in one currency. Well, two, czar and one offshore currency. This, the idea, and you know, it's great. So we sit in the IG platform and we can trade anything in the world. But don't. Don't pop over there and trade there and pop over there and trade there and pop over there. It's great fun, but every time you pop, that pop noise you hear, it's money leaving your account. <laughs> Transaction costs to move currencies, spreads. Now, IG is not as bad as the banks. They don't, you know, I mean, the banks don't transfer money. They rob you when you move money into different currencies, etc. But the point is, it's a cost. And if I can save on a serviette, I will save on a serviette. Anyway, so that's why I then pulled up. This is my favorite currency in the world to trade. But I don't want to be trading. I want to be in euros. So we trade this one. And this is the process we need to go through. Why are we trading certain things? Why do I trade euro dollar? Well, I trade euro dollar because it's the most liquid market in the world, and everyone else trades it, and it's a great thing to trade. Oh, hang on a second, but if I want a, a euro-funded account, this is not good because it incurs a cost. These are, we're running a business. These are the questions we need to ask ourselves. You know, when you're running your hot dog stand and you're serving tomato sauce, why are you serving that tomato sauce? You didn't just go to pick and pay and say, yeah, I love that tomato sauce. You went to pick and pay and you bought six, no, you didn't go to pick and pay, you went to ShopRite. You went to ShopRite and you bought six different tomato sauces. You took them home and you tried them on your friends and you blind tested them and you checked consistency and then you checked price and then you made a decision, right? This was a process. It wasn't just like, yeah, that one. Same here. Why euro, why euro dollar? So I went and had a look at the charts and everything else, and you know what? The system, the process, everything, the, you know, the liquidity might be half as much. So instead of five trillion, we've got two and a half trillion. You know what? That's more trillions than I need. But I've made a decision based on informed processes that actually works for me rather than just, oh, everyone does it, so I will too. Now, I've never traded <laughs> pound euro. I, 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 it, it's just it's a weird sort of currency and the whole pound thing, brexit -y stuff. But you know what? News is news. What the hell? The price will move. That's what matters. Why they move doesn't bother me. The fact that they move is what matters because I can profit from it. 
Starting locally with indices, SA40. I love trading the SA40. It's probably my favorite thing to trade. Um, you can go up to, and, and I'm, I'm starting at the bottom and then scaling up. Obviously, we can scale it in time. Uh, the mini contracts, in essence, is, is, is two and a point, but you've got to have two contracts. So it works out at four and a point. Margin is about one and a half percent. And what I'm working on here, I'm saying for the SA40, to trade at four and a point, you need about 20,000 Rand because that gives you a 4,000 point drawdown. In other words, you've lost 4,000 points on the trot. And that takes a special type of skill. Trust me, I did it in August. <laughs> Actually, no, it wasn't quite 4,000. Let me not be that generous to myself. And at that point, you've still got 4,000 rand in the account, and you can still make money, and 4,000 points is 8%. Man, if you lose 4,000 points on the trot, yo, 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 yo. Not impossible, but, but, but still. So what I'm saying here is, you know, this gives you a ton of wiggle room. And if, you know, to the point I said earlier where you need, say, 2 million and you're like, whoa, where do I start? Well, you start with 20,000 and you start here. Nice, simple, easy, clean, cheap, everything you want. And as much as our market has gone sideways now for three and a half years and tested the patience of everybody, there's still been money made. Now, when the market trends up or down, one will make more money. But even in the sideways market, there has been money to be made. My system has generated profit. I was having a really, really good year until August. Um, so on the SA40, it's 20,000. If we go to the DAX, so there are two DAX, con well, there's many DAX contracts. I'm looking at the minis here. The, the one is, 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 is pound, is sterling, but I'm looking at the euro one. So this is not the major, which is the 25 euros a point. This is the mini, which is 5 euros per point, which is relative, but... To the Europeans, that's, you know, that's just a coffee. Um, to us, five euros is a night out. Um, same story here. What do you need? Well, for that, it's 5,500 euros. Again, you can use 1,000 points, 8% of the index value, before you're pretty much out of the game. And in fact, you're not out. You can trade. It's just that once your drawdown, if your drawdown goes much beyond that, and that's only 1,000 points, but this is a 12,000-point index. That's 4,000 points and a 48,000-point index. So... You see, I told you I love numbers. Is everyone still with me? <laughs> half or totally? <laughs> half. <laughs> Who's the half? Um, so, the, 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 again, so what do you need here? You need 5,500 euros in order to trade the DAX. So that's why we start here where we need 20,000 because 5,500 euros is a truckload of cash. I'll come to that in a second. Equities, to my mind, minimum is 50,000. As I said, I don't trade equities. I, I, you know, if you want to, that is fine. I, don't get me wrong. Just because I say it doesn't mean it is the law. Um, but I, I, I don't like it. I don't suggest it. I know that there's money to be made. I just don't like the risk involved in the process. Um, there's not, yeah, I haven't traded an equity. I don't know. I, 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 did, I shorted some zombie stocks a few years ago, but I did it the old-fashioned way. I borrowed shares and sold them into the market. And, you know, and it was Lonman and Avenge. And, I mean, like, there's two things you know about Lonman and Avenge, right? They're going bust. It's just a case of when. Um, here you're looking for at least 50,000 as an ideal, as a minimum starting point. Probably 70 to 100 is more. And I know that is a truckload of money. The point is that enables you to do proper risk. Because if you start with 5,000, you can't do proper risk. You're going to be completely overgeared. You're going to take 5,000 rand. You're going to take 50,000 exposure. Someone sneezes, and your 5,000 rand is poof. And that's the point, is keeping us in the game. Yes, when the money's poof, you can recreate it, and you can start again. But why start again? Why, why try and trade against the likelihood of success? And the idea that, well, I'll just reload is a gambling mentality, not a business mentality. And trading is business, not gambling. So then those are the individual products. Then we bring it together and we say, how do we manage the overall portfolio risk? What happens if you're long DAX and SA40 and, 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 and everything starts crashing? Well, the bad news is everything is correlated. The good news is, is that you've got guaranteed stops, that you might be short when the market is crashing. And markets don't crash very often. Now, the last couple of years has been exceedingly weird. But you know, I've been in the market since 87. So there's a crash of 87, 98, 01, and 08. So in 30 years, we've had four, which is about, what, every seven and a half years or so, which is about right. 
Um, also, you know, the, 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 there's, there's circuit breakers and the like. The point is, is that there is a chance that if we are in the market, and, and to the point around correlated, in the, in the very short time frames, you know, if, if, and it happens here in our market. So, you know, you wake up on Tuesday morning. Monday was a holiday. We can see what happened in, in Asia overnight. We can see what happened on Monday in the U.S. and the U.K. We can see what happened to Tencent. And, tr- and we know what's going to happen in our market on that particular day. In the very short term, there's a lot of correlation. When, when, when some crazy politician, um, and there are a lot of crazy politicians. In fact, I'll take that back. There are only crazy politicians. Some crazy politician sets off a nuclear bomb or threatens to set off a nuclear bomb or threatens to invade Puerto Rico or was it North Korea? I can't remember. When that sort of stuff is going down, markets are responding. Whether you're DAX, whether you're SA40, whether you are whoever, markets are responding. And they're largely responding the same. If over the longer term, you take a DAX and an SA40 and you take a three-year chart and they've done completely different things. DAX is up 50%. We are like up 12 cents. Um, but in the, in the shorter time frames, they're broadly there. But why do we trade? So then this question is why not just trade one? And there's a reason why we don't just trade one. And I, I'm, I'm, in the last event we did here, I had been toying with the idea of one system, one market become the expert. The one system I have no quibble with, one system, become a pro at that system, whatever it might be. You know, that is your, your party trick, and, and man, you are the best at that party trick. The markets, why do we look at some differences? Because we're going to get different results. There are going to be periods. So our SA40 market has gone sideways for three and a half years. My, 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 my system has made money, but it hasn't optimized because I'm a trend-based trader. I need trends, up or down, but I need trends. So for the last three and a half years, my SA40 profits have been, yeah. My DAX profits, if I had been trading it, which I hadn't, would be really great because the DAX has been great. The DAX went from 8,000 to 12,000 to 9,000 to 12,500. Man, it's been beautiful. Nice and volatile. Big trend is up, but lots of movements are happening and stuff like that. So what it protects you against, in a sense, is when some of the markets go limp, the others can profit you. Now, another way to do it would be to say when to know when to switch markets. And that becomes, I, I've tried that. And I, I've chatted with Sean. He does that currency process where he, Sean Morrison, where he looks at the different currency strengths against each other and then says that's the pair to trade. You know, because there's a, they're, they're strong against each other, etc. And we, we, I looked at ways of doing it in markets. And it doesn't really work because markets don't cross, whereas currencies cross. So it's a case of so I go into the view of, okay, so one system, 721, two indices, and a currency. So you've got to watch for your overall exposure. That's what we're looking at here in terms of what is your overall exposure, what is your overall risk. The problem is you take your, your whatever the amount of money is that you're having, and let's go to the example where your trading portfolio is a million rand because you do 50% growth a year and because you are anticipating needing half a million rand a year to live on. Um, and you could take, on the gearing on, on, on the IG platform, you could take your million and a half your money and you could gear it somewhere between 30 and 200 times. And that's just a hospital, hospital pass. You will, you will crash and burn at that point. You know, someone somewhere blinks and something moves 12 pips against you and you're, you're down and out and the game is over. Traditionally, I've said to folks, your entire portfolio, you want to gear two, two, two and a half to three times at max. So if you're sitting in a situation where your portfolio for trading is a million rand, you want exposure two and a half to three. But that was always taking equity into account. So two things. Firstly, guaranteed stops, FX and indices. So these crashes don't bother you when you've got guaranteed stops. Um, and, and if you... If you you, you use guaranteed stops. I'm going to come back to them, but you always use guaranteed stops. You can start to push that gearing up. So I've been running numbers and crunching, and it says to me that actually because of the low volatility in the FX and index space, and volatility in, in indices and FX is typically about a third that of equity, so we can then double that number, and we're actually in a safer position. We've taken more risk, but conceptually we haven't because we've taken less more risk on a less risky product. Does that make any sort of sense? I mean, we've, we've pushed the number up, but we've gone from an equity risk to an index risk. Indices are a third as risky as equities. In theory, we could triple and go to seven and a half to nine. Instead, we just go to five. 
So we actually come in lower risk. And the guaranteed stops are the significant game changer in this space. So then we start to pull all of that together. So Euro USD, which is the first one I looked at, $2,000, but 10,000 exposures, five times too high, you want closer to two and a half. SA 40, two and a half exposure, great level. Um, DAX, uh, two and a half again, very, very high. DAX in Euro, it's one we care about. Your, your risk exposure, your, for the amount of money you're putting down, your exposure is, is 12 times. Crunch them back to two and a half, you get to those numbers, but if you crunch them to five, we get to those numbers. So per euro, US dollar contract, you need 30,000 czar, which turns out at 2,000 euro. For SA40, you need 20,000. For DAX sterling, you need 90. And for DAX euro, you need 200. Now it all starts to fit together. So how do we, that, 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 that long term. So we've got 20,000. We start at SA40. Uh, we grow our 20,000 to 50,000. We now flip and we can trade a, a, an FX and an SA40. And we grow that 50,000 to, to 150,000. And now we can start doing some DAX or we can start piecing it all together. If we've got a, a million rand we want to trade, we say, well, okay, hang on, a million rand we want to trade, that means we can trade uh, two DAX euro minis, we can trade uh, a couple of the US dollar minis, and we can go and start trading the, the normal SA40 contracts. And that starts to inform us so that when we take a position size, how big is it? How many DAX contracts at 5 euros per point do we take? A 25 euro per point contract is not scary. If, you, if you've got a, if you've got a, a, a million rand and you, and you want to trade DAX, well, then you trade the main DAX at 25 euros a point. Absolutely. Your risk is within it. And what we've done is we've come at this from the business perspective and said, right, let's crunch all these numbers and let's see how they ultimately all start to fit together. And it helps us understand you know, where we start with the hot dog stand, right? We start off with hot dogs, just boring, boring hot dogs. But then eventually one day we introduce some cappuccinos and then we start introducing gourmet hot dogs and, and then we start doing, I don't know, burritos and, and, and ice creams and we slowly grow into it. And on day one when we launched the hot dog stand, we were already dreaming about the cappuccinos and the burritos burritos and the ice cream stand. We knew where we wanted to get to and we knew how we were going to get there. We knew what those milestones were. We don't know how long it's going to take us to turn our 20 into 50 so that we can now start to trade the two. But we've got an idea. We're, our testing and I'll touch on that in a second tells us that it should take approximately 18 months. It might take 14, it might take 20. But we know where the point is where we can flip the business and start to grow it. We know at which point we can open the new door and say, boom, now we're not just hot dogs, we're cappuccinos as well. Now we're not just SA40, we're also trading some FX. And at what point do we say, right, now we're not just SA40 and FX, we're SA40, FX, and DAX Euro. And at what point do we start to scale from the mini DAX at 5 euros a contract to the major DAX at 25 euros a contract? A humongous number of numbers. Is this making sense? It all ultimately comes together. At the end of the day, it, all, it absolutely all fits together. We've got to come from it, and, and I know I'm repeating myself again and again, but because it's so critically important, we need to come to it from that business perspective and say, how do we grow this as a business? How do we scale it? No, one, you know, no business in the world started with 100 stores. Everyone started with one little store and slowly got bigger and added products, and that's exactly what we're doing here. And different folks will start in different places. Someone in this audience right now says, look, yeah, I've got two million. Absolutely cool. I'll start with DAX. Thank you. 25 euros a point done. Sure. Yeah. Others are like, I think I can find 20,000 if I check under my couch. There might be some rands there and get me going. We start in different places. The journeys will be different in the sense of where we start, and it'll take us different times to get there. But ultimately, that journey is all the same, to get us from here to freedom from ties that bind. That's where we're aiming for. Yeah, that's just the two tie into each other. So drawdowns, I've touched on these. So drawdowns are a fact of trading life. It's like your hot dog stand is brilliant until it rains. And when it rains, there's no hot dog stand. You stay at home, which is lacquer, because you stay at home and you watch Netflix, but you're not making any money while you're not watching Netflix. Yeah, and you've still got costs, etc. So 
drawdowns are going to happen. There are going to be times your portfolio is doing great. It's going up and up, little bump and up and up, little bump, and then big bump, and the big bumps happen. Now, what's critically important is the big bump is not because of user error. The big bump, if the big bump is because you didn't action a stop loss, if the big bump is because you got into a trade you shouldn't have, or you got into a trade too big, that's not a drawdown, that is trader error. That is a bad trade. That is a different game entirely. But if you're following the process and you get drawdowns like I got in August and my equity chart was lovely, 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 and now it's kind of starting to recover and off it goes again. That's fine. That's part of what happens. The point with drawdowns is they stress us. It's, you know, the question you need to ask yourself is how bad, how long, and how will I respond? And what we need to know these answers, we need the data. I'm anticipating drawdowns. I'm anticipating five of these horrible trades a year. I'm not anticipating them all in one week. Yes, I accept that. But when they do come, and when I'm sitting there, and it was weird because Pier 3 had been in Joburg on the Sunday, and then I was in Cape Town that week. On the Sunday, I'm having drinks with him, and I'm saying to him, you know what, my trading year is going too well. I'm due a snot club. And he's like, no, maybe it will be a brilliant trading year. Maybe you just have a knock it out the park year. And I'm like, sure, that's possible, but I'm skeptical. And a week later, I'm in Cape Town with him saying, dude, this trading year just got real. Um, I had the expectation. I expected it to happen. That's critically important. The drawdown mustn't surprise you because if it surprises you, it scares you. If it scares you, you'll start doing silly things. So we need that data. We need to understand the stop losses. How do we do it? There are two ways. And I'll touch on the second way first. Let me not do that. I'll touch on the second way first, which is the IG platform and the pro charting has got that back testing feature. Now, I say to folks, start with a backtesting feature. But then once you've backtested it and it looks kind of okay, throw it away and move on. And I'll tell you why. Because backtesting is lovely, but backtesting is exactly what it suggests. It's looking backwards and it tells us a lot that ultimately helps us nothing. We need to test real time. We need to manage that process. What's nice about the backtesting feature is you can go and crunch. You can say to it, right, DAX, 10 years, boom, go and tell me what will happen. And you can get a lot of information back in a big hurry. And, it, you know, you're going to get – and why, why do I say it's not perfect? It's not perfect because, the, you know, the, the backtesting feature says, well, you would have entered there and therefore they take a price. Now, what's that price that you take? Is it the, the bid, the offer, the middle? Also, you're not in the market. Even if you're trading an SA 44 and a point small little contract, your being in the market changes the market. Even if it's a small amount, that market is different for you being there. There's, it is different for you being there. That difference might be tiny, but it is real. So the backtesting feature in IG is lacquer. You pump it in, you see what comes, and then you go and do the practical, which is the Mark Douglas. I've talked about this before. Uh, he talks about it in his book, Trading in the Zone. You manually backtest at least 20-odd trades, even more. You demo trade. So in other words, you say to yourself, I'm going to trade this system, and you do it in real time, but you do it in a demo account, so there's no money at risk. And then you start to trade it, but you trade it small which is why we start SA40, where with 20,000 Rand, we can trade it. That same 20,000 Rand system, we could trade on the DAX, but that requires 200. You know, and maybe for you, 200,000 is what's sitting under your couch at home, in which case, cool. But if it's 20,000 sitting under your couch at home, you start there. It comes back to becoming the pro. You know, what is your trading edge? The ability to execute perfectly. And just to know your system absolutely backwards, upside down, whichever way around it goes. We test it, we go through it. And what this will give you, this will give you the confidence in the system. It will start to create some expectation from you in terms of, excuse me, performance. It will start to create expectation of what drawdowns will be. It's how come... I, I, it's how come I expect those five hit, what I call hit down trades every year. I know that because I've run the numbers and I've tested it and I've tried it and I've played with it and I've seen that occasionally you're in and you immediately stopped out because I use trailing stops. So usually I'm in and it runs a bit, my stop comes up and then take the hit. Very seldom I'm in and it's just like straight down and I get hit for max stop. That happens very infrequently. Well, five times a year, four times in August. And then you start to scale up. 
And as that confidence comes, you start small, the SA40, the two minis, you start to learn your system, you start to trust it, you get that process, you get better at understanding it, you get better at reading it, you get better at running the systems and, 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 and managing the website and the platform and setting the, the stop losses. You want to be able to do, and I'll talk about this, there's a video at Just One Lap, unconscious competence. You want to be able to do this in your sleep. That's what we need to get to. And that's a process, and it takes some time, and there's lots of parts to that process, which include, for example, learning the platform, which include learning your system, which include learning yourself and your responses. But when those pieces all start coming together, and we've got the right amount of capital to trade the product, and we've got the right amount of risk, and we've tested the system, and we've got expectation, and all these pieces start to come together, and not collectively, not at the same time. It's not a eureka moment. You don't sit down and boom. But after six months, you can look back and you can see, man, look at that, that, and you can see them all coming in and starting to work. Multiple trades, touched on this a bit. I'm going to quickly touch it again. They all move in sync, especially uh, guaranteed stop losses. Guaranteed stop losses are your savior. Small cost involved with them. You don't pay unless it's hit, but my trading strategy is I only exit at stops. So I'm always hit on stops, so I always pay for it. But it means I know that that is the point I get out. End of story. Zero questions asked. And IG charges a small fee. They put some restrictions. The stop has to be a certain distance away. But like on the DAX, your stop has to be five points away. <laughs> you know, my stops, you know, on the DAX, my stops are running at uh, 180 points. Five is fine. The one drawback is you can't trail the stop, so you're going to have to manually update it. I'm going to delve into that next week when we start looking at how, sorry, next month, when it, how, how it all fits together. But that suddenly means that black swans and politicians and all of those things are not your problem. The truth is that sometimes some politician will do something stupid, and you'll be on the right side of the trade, and you'll make money from it. The point is, when they do something stupid and you're on the wrong side of the trade, your risk is capped. And that comes back to that distribution. Small profit, small loss. Break even. Big profit, big loss. We remove the big loss. And it's partly to my trading style, which is I only exit on stops, because you never know how long or how far a market or an equity or a, a, an FX will, will, will run. So I only exit on stops. And it, there's a small fee. And this is a cost of doing business. Add it to your costs of doing business. But be ruthless with those costs. You know, if we're going to trade for a lifetime, and, and that lifetime for some of you is 60 years, for some of us a few less, and if we're just saving a couple of bucks here and a couple of bucks there, you know, we want to be the Wati Basson of trading. I mean, that occurs, I was at a checkers, and they scanned something, and it didn't scan. So the woman says, ah, oh, she thinks it's 36 rand. But the checkers policy is simple. Go find the price. So I had to stand there for 12 minutes while they went and found the correct price. Because it turned out it was 39.99. If they charged me 36 rand, they've lost four rand. Their profit on that thing is only 80 cents, which means they've, you know, and it's just the, 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 the attention to detail. Whereas my wife goes to pick a page, she comes back and like it seems half the things on the slip are the wrong price. Usually in her favor, which is why pick and pay makes Little profit and ShopRite makes a huge. We want to be that whitey person. We, I know, I own ShopRite shares. I talk my book. So should you. We want to be that whitey person. We want that attention to deep. We want to look at something and say, you know what, if we do that, we save ourselves yeah, you know, a euro per trade, and we do 30 trades a year. It's 30 euros. You know what 30 euros is? Money in your pocket, not somebody else's. Now, if to save the 30 euros you have to, you know, walk 5Ks, well, then it's like, okay, trade-off. But if to save the 30 euros is just like a click there, and that's fine. And one of those costs is going to be the guaranteed stops. So trade costs. First thing is make them efficient. Watch for those minimums. Uh, IG, 0.2% or 100 Rand, whichever is greater. You need to have. You need to trade those efficiencies. You need to make sure you're trading the right size. Otherwise, you're not paying 0.2. You're paying the 100 bucks. Um, you know, trade in, the, in, in a single currency so you don't get the currency charges. You know, what are you interest earned and paid? Uh, what are you paying for data and charts, etc.? I'm in a situation now where I've got three chart providers um, and two of them cost me money. And I'm like, this seems wrong. So the one I pay for annually, I'll shut it down at the end of the year. I'll renew it. And the second one I've now cancelled. And I do 
everything in one charting platform that doesn't cost me money. It's like, hey, that's, that's a sweet deal. It's saving me four grand a year. It's four grand a year, right? That's money. There's a lot of red wine. You know, where are you getting your you know, information? Do you really need it? Your subscriptions? Do you really use them? Again, this is a business. Be ruthless with those costs. The margins matter. Offshore currency touched on this already. It doesn't matter what currency you trade in. Yeah, maybe you've got a personal preference. Maybe you've got money sitting in a certain currency. Whatever the case is, is pick a currency and then trade everything in that. Now, if you want to trade USD, that's fine. Then trade the S&P uh, and then trade you know, whatever it might be. It's not a problem. It's just pick a currency and trade in that currency. And the beauty of this is, is being South Africans and watching our lovely czar, is now we're earning offshore. We, and this is legit. We're not running scams or anything. This is proper money offshore. Yes, there's tax and death implications and all of those fun and games. I'm not going into those. But we're earning offshore currency. We're earning hard currency that we can now earn from anywhere in the world. So it's about managing. It's about being in control. It's about knowing the how much. It's knowing the, the risk. It's about doing the math. You know, I read a book, an Alexander Elder book. And I'm not a huge fan of Alexander Elder, although I have no right to criticize him, but nonetheless. And he, I, I remember one of the things he said. Is he said, you've got to be brilliant at maths. And you've got to be able to do arithmetic in your head. And I'm like, I don't know. Well, after putting this thing together, okay, you've got, to, you've got to crunch some numbers. You've got to be able to put them together, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to put these into a spreadsheet, and I'll drop them on the website as well so you can download that spreadsheet um, just because I think I probably love math more than most people in this room. And I even enjoy making spreadsheets. Be ruthless. Start small. Start simple. Baby steps. It's going to take us time to get there. How much time is, 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 you know, how long is a piece of string? The point is, and it's what I always say, if we do it properly, the end goal is something that is hugely desirable, that freedom from ties that bind. That is what we then want. And, and what that means is we do what we want, not what we have to. And what we, what, what we want to do might be a job, as I said. It might be that you want to be a manager in a bank. That's cool. If that's where you get your fund, then that's what you should be. But we want to make it a choice rather than a sentence. So the what, the why, the how, the whens, I always end this way. Test, try, tweak, use demo accounts. Demo accounts have two practical purposes. One, test systems. Two, learn the platform. Because if you haven't done your first trade yet, the first trade, the second trade, the 30th trade, the 100th trade, uh, it is scary. No, there's money involved. So the demo, at least you know how the platform works. Don't be, whilst playing with real money, learning how to place a trade. The demo account teaches you how to do it. So that when you've got cash in there, your fears are many, but they're not, am I clicking the right button? Because that's not the fear that you particularly want to be having. So that's a great question. At what point do you panic and say the drawdown is not a drawdown? The drawdown is proof that your system is broken. The system is either broken because it never worked or the system is broken because circumstances have changed. Um, in truth, if you're trading it and it didn't work, then you, should, you, know, you hadn't done your testing properly. Your risk is, is that something that did work no longer works. And there's a couple of mitigations, and then I'll give you a direct answer to your question. We mitigate it by keeping our systems very, very simple, which means the, the simpler they are, the more robust they are, which, which in the world is generally the other way. Complexity equals robustness. But in truth, in the trading world, the less you have on your you – my, my trading system is a 7 and a 21 moving average, simple moving average. Um, I have a two-step entry process, and I exit on stop, which is 2 ATR of the one-time higher. I'll delve into that next week. But the simplicity gives it a lot more robustness to it. To your question, at what point do you start to say, hang on, things are bad? For me, 12 trades. 12 losing trades in a row, which is a monster drawdown. But if you looked at those numbers there, which I was running there, I mean, at that point, you, you, you're still in the game. But why do I do 12 trades? Because testing my system, it's never given me more than six losers in a row. So my testing says six losers in a row. If I'm at 12, something is happening here. Now, I don't abandon. At that point, what I do is I, I, I pack up my hot dog stand and I go home. And I start to say, OK, let's, let's restart back at the beginning. Let's restart the system. Let's restart the testing process. And I've had it happen to me. And we talk in the early 2000s when I was trading more complex. I mean, I used to have trading systems that looked like Christmas trees. Man, if there was an indicator or an oscillator, I stuck it on the chart. If there weren't 20 of them, I wasn't happy. Um, so much so, I couldn't see nothing. 
But, you know, and I'd have the really, really bad drawdowns to it. And there needs to be a point at which you say, and to me it, it's 12. And 12 is a, a very generous component. But it's also so how I crunch the numbers. And I'll quickly throw you some numbers. So for, if I have 12 losses in a row, even if they are at max drawdown in the process, I have lost 60% uh, of my capital, which is scary. So maybe you want to say 10 and make it 50. I got to the 12, as I said. My system says, you know what? The seventh trade might only make me five points, but it makes me some points. Twelve in a row, I'm out. And, and that's still hard to do. Huh? So it's a good point. So in my hourly chart, which I'm trading at the moment, I'm probably averaging about 70 trades a year. Um, yeah, 70 to 80 maybe trades a year. It, it comes and goes. I, I've been on leave, but since I got back, I haven't had a single entry this week. Um, so we're now, what, th okay, three days. But uh, typically I'm doing closer to about a trade and a half a week. This week zero, but some week, yeah, and tomorrow it might trigger. It's just, and at the moment it's because our market is doing exactly sideways. It is so flat, it's a piece of glass. Cool, ladies and gents, we will park it there. Uh, Please, date change, 31 October. It was 26. We had to move it. Uh, if you're physically at the venue, it is JSC because we changed that too. Contact details for IG, contact details for myself. If you've got questions, you're welcome to bang them to me or IG if they're very much more technical platform. Rather, or You're welcome to send it to me. If I can't answer it, I'll just send it to IG. Um, and if IG can't help you because it's less technical and more what is Simon's fancy trading system, then speak to me about it. But you're welcome to contact uh, Twitter, email is simon at justonelap.com, and there all the IG contact details. Legal disclaimers, if you make money, it's yours. Lose money, no longer yours. <laughs> Ladies and gents, we're back in a month. I know today was a hard one in the brain. I promise you, 31 October will be a way more fun one in the brain, and I will, at the core of it, put my 721 system that I keep on alluding to, and then patch everything around it. Thank you very much for your time this evening.